the more I read about constitutional law, and the more I'm reading over some of these cases, since I have a midterm tomorrow, the more I find exactly why Stephen Pastis left the profession of being a lawyer, and why so many people are so disenchanted with and disgruntled about politics, and I just find that to make a long story short, I can see why people argue for for lack of a better term, and not that we're not moving toward this anyway in some way, shape, or form, but I can see why people argue for a monarchical government, and in some ways we are moving towards a monarchy, and it may not be that, at least in our lifetime, it may not be that we have, like, one king or whatever, although eventually there will be, for lack of a better term, there will be one king, and unfortunately that king will be the, will be the Antichrist. And if we look at Daniel 7 real quick, we'll get an idea of what that looks like. Daniel 7, 23 to 27. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it, and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings, who shall rise from his kingdom, and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Now if we go to Yeshua Yisrael's website, which covered this, covers this in really well-studied detail, and this is where I first found out about what Daniel 7 really means, what we're going to see here is that we're moving toward a one world government and eventually back to, for lack of better wordage, a full blown out monarchy. Of course you have the rapture and then for those who are left behind, this is what the seven years are about going to look like. And let's see. Don't worry about them right now. I'm sorry, that's my sister. Say hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. And, uh, well, you can see where Michelle is, but anyway. Yeah. So, okay. Future events. One world government divides into ten kingdoms. Note, the European Union is one of the ten toes. Which kind of makes sense since, as I believe I've read in other places, you do have twelve nations. That's no coincidence. And then the rise of the Antichrist is different from the other nations, it should say, is different from the rise of other kings that rule the earth. And I disagree with um, what they say here about the Antichrist. I do believe that since Gentiles are going to have to follow a Jewish Messiah as well, it would make sense for the Antichrist to be Jewish, not Roman. But anyway, that's another discussion. So as I said, the more I study constitutional law, the more I think, gee, not only would it have made sense for us not to rebel against the King of England anyway, but we're inevitably, we're inevitably moving back toward a monarchy, so what was our whole point of rebelling in the first place? We just really did bring ourselves more confusion.